Manchester United against West Ham on Saturday at Old Trafford. David Moyes coming back. Very <laughs> that. But West Ham. We need to beat West Ham, eh? West Ham, I argue, they need to beat us to keep in the top four hunt. And if the top four is the ambition for Ralph Randick and Manchester United this season, it absolutely should be. The minimum ambition for us now this season has to be a top four finish because whoever comes in, Ten Hag, Potch or someone else, they need Champions League football next year to start off on a strong foot rather than waiting a year to get back into the Champions League. What I'm going to do in this video is run through my starting 11, my preview, my predictions for the game. Going to take a look at who West Ham started in their last game, a loss against Leeds, and how and where the tactical battles are going to be in this game. Please, if you enjoy the video by the end of it, consider dropping a like on it and subscribe if you're new. But let's get straight into this one, eh? And let's take a look at the teams. Now, <clears throat> there, those are the teams that started for United against Brentford and in the last game for West Ham against Leeds. And they lost 3-2. Now, there's a couple of key pe people there that were missing for West Ham in that game. And both of them could potentially, I believe, be back in. I mean, that might be ruled out by Dave Moyes in a press conference. But as I'm recording right now, they could come back. And that's Suset coming back in there. And that's Zuma coming in back in there. Both of those would make West Ham even more dangerous to play. And as we saw in the League Cup, as we saw at the London Stadium earlier this year, West Ham are no joke this year. Absolutely no joke. The fact that they've continued their form from last year surprised a lot of people. But I want to focus here on Manchester United. And the problems that we saw there in the first half against Brentford, we all know where the problems were. And the problems were all around that part of the pitch. Brentford overloaded it. Brentford threw in like two, three bodies down there. Whether it was McTominay there, whether it was Fred there who dropped a bit deeper. And he was just, he was trying. I remember one pass he put over to Delo over there and it was abysmal. Manchester United were not able to play out from the back with the ball against Brentford because they pressed us very well. And I absolutely expect West Ham to do the same thing. It's not rocket science really to, to play against Manchester United, is it? You know that if you play with intensity and you press, odds are you're probably going to cause Manchester United some problems. And that's my fear this weekend is, is West Ham would have just had to watch that first half United against Brentford and go, all right, we know exactly what we need to do. And they do know exactly what they need to do, which is why this guy is going to have to have another a proper monster game. I didn't think that he could really play that number six role because I've watched the game against Villarreal, the first game where he was tasked with playing in that number six role and he folded. Manchester United folded. The low was awful at right back and McTominay was awful as central defensive midfielder. I remember that. And obviously Ronaldo saved us in that game with that late goal. But McTominay here today, oh, I'd say today, against West Ham tomorrow, he's going to be facing much more difficult. He's going to be facing a pressing rice. And I'll tell you what, right? We were obviously linked with Rice so much during the summer, but it was considered a, a move that was too expensive. And I agree with it at the time. I have to say, I've been really impressed by how much Rice has progressed this year. Really impressed. I don't think there are many players who, from, who came back from the Euro 2020 campaign from the England squad who have gone on to have really good seasons. Obviously, we've got Harry Maguire and Luke Shaw, two players who were both very good in the Euros, but have struggled this year. Rice has really progressed. And I would expect him to make constant forward runs into these areas. So I would worry that McTominay is going to get overloaded. What you're going to have to see from Manchester United is, is the midfield three operating as close to a triangle the whole game. Dropping deep, dropping together, moving up together, playing as a midfield unit rather than individuals. Not really much you can say about United this season. But you're probably going to see Bowen cutting inside. You're probably, whether it's Bowen or whether it's Vlasic or whether it's Ben Rama, I don't think Ben Rama is, I think he's away on a AFCON duty, actually. I don't think he can play. But for, if you're looking at this, the, they typically do play with a 4 2 3 1 anyway, right? So if Fred and Bruno do operate inside this position here, okay. But look at that. Look at that bit there. McTominay with three players. It's going to get, a, that's clearly going to be the busiest part of the pitch. And it should be as far as West Ham are concerned because they know that's that's where they can hurt Manchester United. But if we're looking at the starting 11 that I think will play, I can't imagine there's going to be any change to that back five. I think if I was if I was Varane or Lindelof, I would be pretty fuming right now if I was dropped for Harry Maguire. Both of them played very well against Brentford. I think both of them have been playing pretty well the last couple of weeks. 
And Maguire came on the last 20 minutes. We conceded a goal and he just looked shaky. Just looked shaky. Maguire's going to have to wait for the Middlesbrough game to get a full 90 minutes. I think he'll start and he'll, he'll probably play well in that game, but he has to. He's got to force his way in. There's no way just because he's captain that Maguire comes into this team. It should be Rana Lindelof starting there. Now, I'll tell you what, this is going to be an interesting battle. Tellez against Bowen. I think Tellez has really impressed all of us in the last few weeks. I think he's starting to show more of the Porto-type Tellez that we thought we were signing. But Bowen's banging form. Absolutely banging form. So we're going to have to see whether it's Lindelof coming over here, covering him behind, or whether it's Varane on that side. I think it's Lindelof. Tellez is going to have to have a very, very good game. And I think it was, well, I don't think wan is even actually available yet. But even if wan was available, I think Delo would keep his place. That back five right now, for me, seems pretty certain. I don't have to ask too many questions about that. And in midfield, I'd be very surprised if there's any change to that either. It all comes down to, I mean, you could easily see this, if I'm being completely honest, now that I'm thinking about it. You could absolutely see Matic coming in there. And I suppose we wouldn't be too surprised, but I think it would be slightly unfair on McTominay, given how good he was against Brentford. But at the same time, he went off with a slight niggle. He had a, a little bit of a back injury, not much of it, more of a back concern than a back injury. But who would you start there, Matic or would you start McTominay? Matic has obviously got the experience of playing in these sorts of games and playing in that sort of role, and it's going to be busy there. But that would scare me because it's going to be so active there. There's going to be so much movement. Matic is a very static player. We know that. When he's got space and time, he's great. When, you, when, when you've got two players buzzing around him and he's going to, Antonio will drop deep. For nows will cause all sorts of problems. Bowen will cut inside. Vlasic, whoever they play on the wings, Bowen will definitely start. They're going to cause an overload in this part of the pitch. I know I'm repeating it, but this is, cru this is crucial. Absolutely crucial to the game. So I don't know whether I'd start McTominay or Matic there. I think given how good he was against Brentford, I would play McTominay because I always like playing players on form. But maybe he's going to go for a little bit more experience in Matic. Who would you start? You let me know there. Now, the key for Manchester United in this game, as we all know right now, surely, that's Bruno Fernandes. Inside this number eight role that allows him to drift over here, to drift over there, to drift everywhere without leaving too much of a space because he's not as a number 10. Bruno's got two goals against Villa and two assists against Brentford. He's been crucial. And he needs to have a stormer. I think he's going to... I don't, well, I'm surprised they played Lanzini there, but I suppose it's kind of down to injuries, right? But Susek will probably, if he's available, come back in there. And that midfield two of Rice and Susek, powerful. I remember McTominay away at London Stadium. I remember him, play, it was Fred who was playing slightly deeper and McTominay was allowed to sort of drift into these positions here. I remember him doing a lovely through ball to Ronaldo that he spooned with his first touch. Remember that. Um, but I think it'll be McTominay, if he is playing deeper, he'll play deeper there and Fred being allowed to move forward. But Fred's got to have a better first half, man. For sure. Fred has to keep possession. Just keep recycling possession. Everyone has to move more. This West Ham team are no joke. Absolutely no joke. It is a pretty fantastic job that Moyes has done there. And I'm worried about it. For sure I'm worried about it. Especially if Susek comes in. But Bruno, for me, has to be the key. He has to be the man that drops deeper, links play well, knows when to drop deep, knows when to go forward. And I... I think it I think it probably will be that that midfield three. I think he'll stick with it. Even though we were abysmal in that first half against Brentford, we were sensational in that second half. And I think that's what we've got to go into this game thinking. Now, as far as the front three is concerned, there's questions to be asked here. Jaden Sancho was left out of the squad to face Brentford for family reasons. He went to a, a funeral and condolences to him and the Sancho family. Could he come back in? Now, he could come back in. But of course, who scored at the weekend? Greenwood scored. Ilanga scored. And I haven't actually got him on the bench. Let me get him on the bench now. But Marcus Rashford got among the goals again. Marcus Rashford finally getting a goal. Who would you start against West Ham in these positions? I think for me, there's one guaranteed starter. And that's Ilanga. Ilanga has to... And it's, I'm genuinely saying that. He's probably the only guarantee... No, Ronaldo's definitely going to start. But Ilanga should be starting out on that left wing. There is no reason whatsoever to take him out. And there are tons of reasons to keep him in. The attitude, the application, the work rate, the goal. Everything about Ilanga right now is what we need inside this team. We need his... We, we need we need Ilanga. And for me, Ilanga starts. So I suppose the question really then is who starts on the right wing? And you know what I think about Rashford on the right wing? Absolutely should not happen. He's abysmal there. Rashford should not play on that right wing. By comparison, he's so much better on the left in terms of you looking at uh, the best performances from Rashford anyway. 
So I would like to see Rashford probably come off the bench. I think him bringing Rashford on in like the 55th, 60th minute when we need that sort of... That's when he's going to cause Kufal and Dawson or whether it's Dawson or whether it's Zuma. It's going to cause West Ham problems, big problems. And if we had Rashford and Sancho on the bench coming on for Elanga and Greenwood, that would be great. I actually think he's going to... Oh, spoiler alert. I think he's going to stick with, this, with the same 11 that started against Brentford. You could see Sancho, probably Sancho for Greenwood is the most likely change, I think. But there's no way he's going to take Ronaldo out. And there's so much that keeps getting said about Ronaldo. And I, I don't understand it. He's not the problem. He poses a tactical issue in that he's not that pressing forward. He doesn't like playing isolated. So we will see Ronaldo drop here, drop there to receive the ball, drop over here, drop everywhere. He won't just operate as a pure number nine and wait for the ball like he did at Real Madrid because he's... We aren't dominant enough. He has to help in the build-up play. But Ronaldo's not the problem, man. Ronaldo's never been the problem. And it, I find it a bit infuriating, really, that anybody's trying to suggest that he is. The greatest goal scorer of all time. And he's ours. So start him. And get the balls into him. That's something I really did like against Brentford. Tellez was definitely was coming down here a lot. And he was firing crosses into Ronaldo. That, that's a threat that we need to have here. But then he's got a cover back for Bowen. It's going to be a much more difficult game than Brentford. And saying that, it was a difficult, it wasn't exactly an easy game against Brentford. We did everything possible in that first half to go in 2-0 down. If it wasn't for David De Gea, we would have been. But for this game, there. That's where we win or lose it. That's where we nearly, that's where we tried our hardest to lose it against Brentford. That's where if we do that against West Ham, we probably will lose it. And if we do the same first half that we did against Brentford, we will go in 2-0 down against Moyes at Old Trafford. And nobody needs that in their life. But who would you start? For me, I'm making no changes. I think the question marks are around probably Greenwood. Would you start Sancho or Rashford there? I don't think you can drop Elanga. In my opinion, I don't think you can drop Elanga. So I don't think Rashford's really a conversation to start. Maguire... Or you could have a conversation, but in my opinion, it shouldn't be one. He should be on the bench again. And McTominay or Matic. And I would rather start McTominay, but it depends whether his back problem. He might still have the back problem and it could be Matic there. Would you stick with the 4-3-3? What would you change, if anything? You let me know what you think in the comments below. But West Ham's going to be a, a tough game, eh? A tough game on Saturday. And if we win, we go above West Ham, Spurs and Arsenal. Spurs play Chelsea this weekend. Arsenal, I believe, play Burnley. I'm all Arsenal out of fucking anything up. Um... So we need to get a win here. If we don't win and West Ham win, it means we're really chasing that top four and we have to hope that others start dropping points. It's all about setting the... And it's the last game for the international break, man. We need to set some momentum. Go into that international break after a bad performance and a bad result. It won't be a good two-week international break. It never is, but it will make it 10 times longer. Who would you start? You let me know in the comments below. Hope... You did enjoy this video. A bit of a tactical preview looking at where West Ham can threaten, where their danger points are, and my preview. You let me know what you think in the comments. As I always say, I've said it four times now, so I may as well go to the outro.